Hey kids, good to see you again. Have you ever thought about how amazing Jesus was? He did so many amazing things. It, it's hard to actually kind of pick between which ones you think are the most amazing things that Jesus did. Maybe it's feeding the 5,000. Maybe it's healing a blind man. For me, and again, it's kind of hard. You can't pick one above others, but I think it was pretty awesome that day that Jesus was out there in the middle of the storm. We, we've kind of been in some stormy weather recently. We, we went to the beach the other day before the weekend, before, just before they closed it, and the water was rough, and man, it was coming way up on the beach, and it's kind of like, oh, you could see how scary this could be. But Jesus is in the middle of the Sea of Galilee with his disciples. You know this story. It's found at the end of chapter 4 in Mark's Gospel. It's also in the other Gospels, but that's one of the places that I want to point you to. Mark, chap the end of chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And the disciples get worried because Jesus is asleep in the boat, but the storm is building up and they're afraid of the wind and the waves and all those kinds of things. And then Jesus, they, they finally wake Jesus up and say, Jesus, so what's going to happen to us? Don't you care? Which is, boy, you want to talk about an all-time silly question, does Jesus care? And Jesus steps up, and the, and the text says that he speaks or he rebukes the wind and the waves, and what he says is, peace be still. Maybe it's kind of like your mom when, or dad when they say, hey, 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 settle down. It's a little bit like that, but it has a whole lot more power than that, as you know. I sometimes wonder whether Jesus had to holler over the wind and the waves, Peace be still! Or is it more like peace? That he didn't have to raise his voice for nature to hear the command to be peaceful. You know, I, we've, we've had our grandbabies here recently, and the littlest one, Juliet, is, is, has already figured out that if she's going to be heard, she better come up with some volume. And she does. But you know, more than that, Jesus had so much power that he didn't have to compete with the noise of the winds and the wave. He simply said, peace. And the winds and the waves obeyed. Wouldn't it be cool if people obeyed Jesus and God the way the winds and the waves does? But I want to get back to that idea of peace. Because what's interesting is if you keep reading in Mark chapters Four, and then we go into chapter 5, we have two more stories. One where he heals a man who's been possessed by all these demons. You know it is the pigs running into the lake story, the pig story. And the, the, the demons leave the man and, run in, and Jesus brings peace to a man who had no peace whatsoever. And then he goes over the other side of the lake and he brings peace to a woman whose body's been broken and he brings peace not only to her body but her relationship with, her, with, with the religious community and all those kinds of things. And then he brings peace to Jairus' family when he raises his daughter from the dead. And it's Jesus bringing peace to all these places. It's pretty amazing. Matthew, in chapter 5, will record a set of distinctive things that set people who follow Jesus off. And one of them, right in the middle of it, is called blessed or happy or joyful or fulfilled, those who, who reach for the joy of the Lord are the peacemakers. And then he says, and the peacemakers, those who are peacemakers, will be called... I bet some of you know it. What is it? Ah! You got it right! Very good, Abby! Peacemakers will be called children of God. Wow! Now, to a certain extent, John in 1 John will tell us that all of us are children of God, but what is it that characteristically describes us if we're really following Jesus? It is that we bring peace. Now, let's make no mistakes. I've never stood in front of a storm and said, Peace! And it cooperated with me. I have never touched someone and their body be healed. I have never spoken to someone who's dealing with things that are difficult and, they, and instantly they, they have, have reached that peace, nor have, let's be sure and say, as you well know, have never touched anyone and they've come back from the dead. And neither of you. But what I know is, is that you can be someone who brings peace. 
You bring peace to your family when you cooperate with your mom and dad. You bring peace to your family when you, when you decide to get along with your brother or sister or brothers and sisters. You bring peace when you come to church and you decide to be cooperative with the people who are around you and be part of the whole, the whole church community rather than just saying, ah, church is for me and I'm going to run and do whatever I want to do. You bring peace to those places. And when you do that, there will be people who will stop and say, there, there's a child of God. You know, it's my hope that you are blessed with Jesus' peace in your life because that's what Jesus came to do. When we say joy to the world, it's about Jesus coming to bring God's, that God rejoices that He came and to bring that joy and peace into our lives. I hope that you know a little bit and that you continue to grow in the idea of Jesus bringing peace in your life. And the more peace He brings to you, the more you reach out to other people that are around you and live in such a way and act in such a way and act with kindness and caring and a full heart that God has given you to bring peace into their lives. Let's be peacemakers. Bye.